You guys, today we're going over the HF96V by HSF Tools. This is a handheld thermal imaging camera. I'm going to give you an HVAC Tech's perspective of how to use this, what I use it for, and things you guys might be able to use it for. So the possibilities are endless, but as an HVAC Tech, I'm gonna show you what I do with it and um, the way it makes my job easier. So let's go. Okay hey guys, so real quick inside the box here, you get the actual camera device. You will get a charger and then some booklets. So just uh, we're gonna breeze through these real quick because everybody's really more concerned with how it works and what it can do. All right, yeah, it just goes over what the battery is, the maintenance of it, calibration. So they prefer you send it back to the factory if it needs calibration, which I recommend that too. You don't wanna start messing with something you're not really sure about. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's a pretty nice manual. Um, tells you everything that it does, the components, um, has a type C charger. Uh, it does have a laser, a thermal lens, optical lens. The, um, it has a tripod mount, uh, a wrist strap. Yeah. Pretty basic handheld uh, thermal imaging camera. Right, if we take a look here at the device, has some warming, warnings on there. Here's the lenses. And where the chargers are right here. That's where the charger is, right there. Four buttons, pretty basic. And then here's the trigger for taking pictures and also um, it will shoot the laser from there too. So we'll hold down on the power button to turn it on. Comes up HSF tools. And after about five seconds, not even, maybe two or three seconds, she's ready to rock. And every, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, it will calibrate itself. So from here to here, that is your temperature line. So our warmest temperature it's detecting is up here and our coolest is here. And then you can see from the crosshairs on here, that's the center line. Our blue crosshair is our minimum temperature and our red crosshair is our maximum temperature. That makes it really, really easy for doing delta Ts, temperature splits, finding um, a, a cool spot, stuff like that. And if you wanted to, you could turn all those off in the settings if you just wanted just a basic um, uh, camera with none of that on there, you can turn all that off. So we'll get into the settings here. Um, this is one thing you wanna make sure you adjust. So the distance here, if you're say 10, 12 feet away from a, a target point, you want to adjust this. So it, it does it in meters and one meter is a little more than three feet. So if you're 12 feet away, you want to make sure you adjust that to say four meters or so. And if we go through the display settings, um, yeah, see, this is where you can turn off those crosshairs. You can turn the hot, the cold, the center off, and then you can also turn parameters on. You can change the unit, time and date. Uh, pretty basic stuff there. So we'll back up, and we have image settings, image mode, um, thermal fusion, and visual. You can actually also change this from um, when you're from the main screen, from the, um, the picture taken screen, you can press up on the on, see, we're going from here to fusion mode and then visual, thermal fusion visual. Visual just being a normal camera, thermal being your thermal, and then fusion being a fusion view. So if we press down, we cycle through our, um, so this is above alarm, black hot, so your, your warm ports will be black. Red hot, your warm points will be red. Uh, fusion. Iron bow and rainbow. I usually keep it between iron bow and rainbow, but um, some of these are, they can be helpful, but um, I usually just keep it between iron bow and rainbow. We'll go back to rainbow. And uh, let me see if there's anything else. 
So one of the settings on here that you can adjust is your emissivity. So they have a bunch of them already pre-programmed in here, or you could do a custom one. So you see they have all these, these ones already locked in here. You can just pick, pick what you want. But we're gonna leave it where it comes, the custom at 0.97. Um, as far as e emissivity goes, um, you can you can look up YouTube videos to better explain it to you better than I can in this demonstration video of this camera. But if you are interested in that, um, just Google or do a YouTube search of emissivity explained. There's a couple good videos out there on that. So, all right, let's get into the camera and see what it could do. So we got this church here. We got this spiral, spiral duck. We can go down and we're doing a air conditioning maintenance on this. So we can go very easily check discharge. You don't have to worry about getting it in the center because you can look up here and see what your minimum is. That cross, the blue crosshair will find the minimum temperature in the screen. We can go down here to this one. Our minimum temperature, 55. See, we're getting cooler as we go down because we're getting closer to the source. 54, 55. And our ductwork goes around. We got this ductwork here. See, this is neat. If you look at this, see this duct is not insulated. So you can see it's a lot bluer than its surroundings because it's full of that cold air there and we're still picking up at the vent our coldest point is 51 but you can see all around it is red because it's warmer and we can go here we can see this window we have some infiltration there yeah, every uh, few seconds, the camera calibrates. We can see this is a refrigerator here, and we can see the leakage from that refrigerator. That's pretty cool. See that leakage? And then you can also see the warmth of the door heaters. And we can go around and, and find if so this is an old church hall, so we can go around and find any infiltration into the building. Now, we don't have a very cold day or anything here. It's just, it's cool to do. It's warming up outside. It's getting springtime, but you can see the blue on the floor there. That's where we have some infiltration. And you could do that all over a building. All right, guys, out here we have a Bosch heat pump running in cooling mode. Let's check it out. See all the heat being discharged out of the top. The coil is good and warm. Heat, you see? And then down here is our liquid line. It's pretty warm. It's at least warmer than its surroundings. And you can see it's actually finding that suction service valve with the cold crosshair, which is right now 49 degrees. We can take a look at this board here, see what kind of heat it's making. Yeah, it's pretty warm. This is very good for checking breaker panels. See if you have a one that's warmer than the other, something like that. So we have a panel right here. And that top one is warmer than the rest. That's probably because that's our air conditioner one. Even though it doesn't say it, and we can change modes here. White hot, you can see it's whiter up there, above alarm. 
black hot, now that top one is black. Red hot, <laughs> so now it's red. Fusion, it's pretty cool. Iron bow, and then rainbow is what I usually keep it on, right there. And if we press the top button here, we can go from fusion to visual, which is basically just um, uh, nothing. It's just camera mode and then thermal, which is what I usually like to keep it at. Either thermal or fusion will give you a infrared picture. Yeah, guys, say we want to get an instant Delta T. Come up here, bam, 48 degrees. I don't know if this one does. Yep, this one too. 48 degrees. And then just go right over to your return, wherever that might be. Ours is actually over here. We'll just hit the filter, which is in desperate need of changing, but we take the center reading, which is 60. And we have an instant delta T right there. No need to put your, your thermometers in and, and wait. You know, they still do have their place, but if you need an instant temperature reading, these are perfect for that. We got these Bosch ductless units. We got one here, one here, and then one in an office over there, right here from the ground. Bam. Quick temperature, 49 degrees, 50 degrees, and then the top looks like 63-ish. That warm spot right there, I think that's where the electrical is. Which is pretty neat. But yeah, bam, 48 degrees. And if we go just right over top of it to get the return, is 62 degrees. This one here, 51. So we're gonna get about one meter from our target here. And wow, this one is kicking butt. This one's a lot smaller, 35 degrees, wow. And here we're at another location. We're just testing the discharge of this furnace, which is putting out about 103 degrees out of that register there. So again, guys, very quick Delta T's with these thermometers instant you don't have to wait for a thermometer to heat or cool down instant temperature taking and we'll just check out the duct work of this furnace here and you can see all the loss from it you could definitely use some duct sealing on this on this furnace here and you see that look at it a lot of red there that's what, everywhere there's red there's heat escaping we are running this unit in heating mode so we'll come down a little bit you see that we got air leakage out of that furnace which really isn't that big a deal but it does it shows it right away all right guys so in a nutshell what does an hvac guy use a thermal imaging camera for taking temperature so um that's what i mainly use it for is taking temperature delta t's um losses out of a unit if i had some radiant floor heat to work on i would it could show the radiant floor loops instantly um and you can take it temperatures of all kinds of stuff you can take the temperature of your of a pcb board um you can take temperature of a breaker panel and i mean the possibilities are endless uh water leaks it'll put a little uh, water leak will stand out immediately on a thermal imaging camera so but what i mainly use it for is to take temperatures of stuff um now our gauges the digital gauges they give you an instant superheat and subcooling but if you didn't have that if you still had an old analog gauge you could get a temperature of your suction or liquid line and do a quick math uh conversion to get your superheat and subcooling like I said, the guys, the things are, the possibilities are endless with a thermal imaging camera. Um, and if you guys are interested in buying one, 
I'm going to put a link down in the description for this one. Like I said, it's by HSF Tools, and this is the HF96V. They have other models. They have a ton of different stuff. I'll link their social medias and um, the product links down in the description box if you want to buy one. So it's about 200 bucks. Now, this is the HF96V. Um, when I clicked on the link, they sent me for the HF96. There was a $50 coupon that you could you could apply. So that would be the one I would go with. Um, so, so it'd be around 150 bucks. So I'm not sure how good that coupon is going to be good for, but it'll be between 150 and 200 bucks, depending on which one you want to get. Plus, like I said, they have other options there. Um, they have a buyer's choice guide. I'm going to link all that down in the description where the buyer's choice guide will pair you with the correct thermal imaging camera that you're looking for. But all right, guys, that's it for this one. I'm going to be using this in some upcoming videos. I'll, I'm going to use it a lot. I'm sorry, I'm not, I can't give this one away because I'm going to use it for a while, uh, but I will have some giveaways coming soon. But all right, guys, that's it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.